Well, the Israeli military has confirmed it's withdrawing almost all of its troops from southern Gaza as the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces growing international pressure on his handling of the war so far. For more on the situation, we're joined by Karen Beatty, who's the team leader for Save the Children in Gaza. Yeah, we really, really were shocked by this, um, Lisa, and um, I really just want to pass my sincere sympathies to um, Zomi's family um, and friends. We we were absolutely shocked uh, when we heard the news, um, and I think it sent quite a wave of of kind of nervousness, uh, feeling just a little bit um, unsure of ourselves now uh, that that we've heard this this terrible thing that happened, which was clearly a targeted attack um, on World Central Kitchen. Um, and, you know, I think we're a little bit unsure of which way to go next. What does it do to your confidence in the system of alerting Israelis to the fact that you are aid vehicles moving through Gaza? Mm. Yeah, you know, um, the World Central Kitchen incident is not the first there have been others where um, uh, it's it's mostly been um, actually static facilities, buildings um, that have um, belonged to MSF, etc. And um, so, you know, we've we've seen that, and that's made us quite nervous. Um, but but I think that this just sort of brings it to a new level of of realizing that it was such a failure that they didn't just sort of uh, um, target the first vehicle and then realize the mistake. Um, they, they just continued. So that information was absolutely not with the operator of that drone at that time. And, and, and I think none of us really understand exactly what happened or, or why. Um, so it does leave us feeling a little bit vulnerable. How have the deaths changed how you're operating on the ground day to day? Um, actually, so far for us, it, it hasn't really changed much um, because we can't really see anything from that incident that we can learn. Um, so, you know, to, to be able to change and adjust our, our own actions. Um, we, we have never traveled at night. Um, so that would be perhaps one thing we would have done, but we've never done it. So it's not, you know, it's not something that we need to amend. Um, so we're continuing and, and trusting um, that, that, that our reporting into the system will somehow get through to the correct people. Karen, six months on from the start of this war, how, you're a very experienced aid worker. How does what you see on the ground compare to other situations you've been in over the years? It's very different, Lisa. Um, I've never seen uh, this many people uh, sort of crammed into this tiny little space. Um, they're all terrified. Um, they're living in... Um, every available space in the streets. As you drive around, there's little kids running about. Um, there's people walking in the streets because there's literally no space. Um, access to virtually any kind of service, whether that's the collection of um, rubbish from the street or it's you know some kind of complicated medical procedure is very, very difficult. So it's I think it's because of the concentration of people that are in this tiny little space and the fact that you are so aware of their complete dependence um, really on, on humanitarian aid. Um, and just to watch the children that they're not in school, obviously, because all the schools are either damaged or they have their housing, um, people who've been displaced from their own homes. So um, they're, they're um, suffering from diseases they shouldn't be suffering from. They're, um, they're just all over the place, which creates a huge protection problems for them um, as well. They're, they're just very vulnerable. Um, and so it's, it, it is different from, from a lot of the other contexts that, that I've worked in. Karen Beatty from Save the Children, thanks for joining us and please do stay safe. Thank you so much, Lisa.